Chris Jenkins against Liam Taylor. Chris has come through a couple of terrific performances, beating Johnny Garden and then beating Paddy Gallagher, and has the champion has the belt, which I know means an awful lot to him, and a great opportunity as well for Liam Taylor, who's only suffered defeat once against 21 victories from Middleton in Lancashire. And first of all, Liam, let's, let's start with you and tell us a little bit about what winning the British title would represent for you. Can you keep the noise down, please, guys? Keep the noise down. Whoa! Shh! Thank you. Yeah, it'd mean a lot. Um, obviously, I've been waiting a long time for this. been professional eight years now. Um, yeah, it's, that's what they sort of train for, you know, to, to win titles, and I'm glad that the opportunity is finally here. Best win that you've got, the name on your career, I guess on the face of it, it has to be Tyrone Nurse. Yeah, Tyrone Nurse, obviously my only defeats to him, and then I've avenged the defeat, so, yeah, it's, it's like I said, again, it's my best, my best win by, by far, really. Tell us a bit about, about yourself and, and how you got into boxing. Why boxing as a career? Just as a kid, you know, a load of energy. I just tried every sport, really, and boxing was the one that, you know, I was the best at, really, and, yeah, that's what came from there. I was nine when I started and then turned professional when I was 20. When did you start to realise you were actually pretty good at it? Probably about 15, when I started winning, you know, area titles and stuff like that as an amateur, and then when I got to 19, 20, doing well in the ABAs, and then thought I'll give it a go as a professional. Tell us about uh, your thoughts about Chris as a fighter, because I'm sure you know he's he's had televised performances, so you've had many opportunities to sit and work out what your tactics are likely to be. Yeah, I've seen Chris a lot. You know, like I say, he's, he's been on on the big shows quite a lot. He's you know he's had good opportunities, so I've watched him a lot. He's a good boxer. You know, he's not got many faults at all. He's he's skilled. He can punch a bit. So I know it's going to be an hard night for me, but that's what you want, you know, for a British title, you want a challenge. And if you won the British title, if you got that Lonsdale belt, what would it mean to you? Yeah, it'd mean a lot. Obviously, you know, winning any title is good as a professional. Um, the British is, British is a little bit more special. Um, it's what I set, set my goals when I first turned professional to win. I wanted to win it a little bit sooner, but, you know, it took its time, but here we are now. So, Chris, I remember when you went in against Johnny Garton, you were almost of the mindset, tonight, it's got to be my night. If I don't win it now, I'm going to start to wonder if I, if I ever will. But you did it. You got your defence thereafter. So, the last 12 months haven't been bad for you. Um, no, considering I think it was August of last year, I nearly walked away from the sport. Hold it closer, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I nearly walked away from the sport in um, August last year. Um, but then luckily, then the man Gary Lock, my coach, said, Look, you'll have your opportunity, your opportunity will come. And then it's, yes, yeah, it's snowballed that I've, you know. I had a good fight against Johnny Garden, I got a lot of respect for. And then I went out to Ireland in Belfast and I defended my title out there whilst picking up the Commonwealth title as well. So. Just tell us about the impact that Gary Lockett's had on, on you as a boxer and, and on your career, you know, making you believe in yourself. Um, I think he's, he's just been there. He's, um, he's obviously boxed a world title. And, um, he just, he's just he's more like a mentor as well, not just a coach. But he's a friend and I know. And he's just a good guy, simple as. You, uh, you probably don't like being reminded of the fact, but there's hardly a fight which goes by when there's not the old claret, when there's not blood <laughs> pouring down your face. How, uh, do you, do you, are you just sort of reconciled to the fact that that's the way it's always going to be? Well, you know, I haven't even been cut by a punch, so, you know, it's all been air clashes. So as long as he keeps his head out of the way, and then it'll be all right, you know. But, um, you know, I got cut in the last fight um, in round four. I went back to the corner and I said, whoa, you cut the game up, see ground with it. So that's the attitude. If I get cut, just ground with it. And I suppose having been cut so many times, you know, sometimes you see guys who get who get hurt like that and you can almost see the panic, but you, you're you used to it. Oh, it's just like another day, isn't it? It's just <laughs> <laughs> stitches again, here we go. But no, it's all right. It's just standard, isn't it? you just got to ground with it. It's a man's sport, isn't it? Tell us about your thoughts uh, about about Liam. He's obviously got a, a lot of a lot of respect for you. What are your thoughts about him as a fighter? 
Um, first of all, I respect anyone I go in the ring with. You know, at the end of the day, we, we're not going in the ring, but our life on the line. So there's always respect there. But I know he's going to win over Tyro Nurse, but I don't know when, I, you know, no disrespect to him. I haven't seen any of his fights. But I know he's going to be in that fight. And, you know, camp's already begun roughly two weeks ago. We've had some good sparring with Robbie Davis Jr. And the fellas, Benjamin from Birmingham. So, no, the camp's ready away. And last one, before we move on to the next fight, you've got that uh, Lonsdale belt, which is what you always wanted to achieve. How much has it meant to you getting that? And how, and I guess, following up on that, how much and how seriously do you want to make sure at the end of those 12 rounds that you've still got that belt? Um, it's like I said, that, oh, I'm British level fight there. Last like my world title fight. So if I can win that out right now, defence now, defence after Christmas, and it's something for my kids to have you know, down the line and stuff. And it's a memory, isn't it? Kids can look at it and say, uh, Dad was actually pretty decent. <laughs> no, the kids will probably say it, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, <laughs> thank you very much. I hope that's not the case, <laughs> if it happens. But that's one of, uh, one of three fights to look forward to, the guys who are up here at the front now. And let's move on now to the fight for the vacant British super middleweight title. Lerone Richards and Lennox Clark. On the face of it, this looks to me like pretty much a, a pick em sort of contest. In other words, if you're going to be putting a book together, who do you make as the favourite for this one? It really is difficult to work out who is likely to emerge victorious at the end of this. Let's start with uh, Lyrone, I think, first of all. The boss from New Malden, undefeated in how many now is it? Twelve? Twelve fights, yes. And uh, this, uh, would you agree, first of all, with what I just said there, that this is likely to be a tough, tough night? Um, absolutely. You know, it's for the British title, so um, uh, it's, it's never going to be an easy fight when you fight for the British title. You're always going to have to do the extra more um, to win it. So, yeah, I'm expecting a tough fight. Now, those who didn't see you in your last contest, a, a really good performance in beating... Tommy Langford, how satisfied were you with the, the way you shaped up that night? Yeah, you know, it was okay. Um, it was okay performance. It wasn't my best. Uh, I had a 13-month layoff um, before jumping in the ring with Tommy Langford. So, you know, I'll give myself like a, a C- minus for that fight. C-? minus, yeah. As low as that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't great. No. I wasn't so what do you think you can do better that you didn't show us that night? Well, you know, I know what I can do better. Um, and um, you'll see that on the 34th of November. People have said that you, as a boxer, can be a little bit too laid back, that it ne you need to be put under some real pressure before we see the best of you. Is that, is that fair? Uh, well, we'll see. Um, you know, I know I've been boxing at a high level as an amateur. I think a lot of people don't know that, but boxing at a high level as an amateur, um, went to Olympic qualifiers, won nine national titles. So, you know, I've boxed at a high level before. Um, so we'll see what happens um, on, on the 30th, whether Lennox can push me or not. Um, sure he can. What do, you, what do you think about Lennox before we move on to hear from him? You know, I mean, he's, he's got this hard man reputation. He came through that great performance against your male smile in, uh, in Leicester, wasn't it? When you, when you came through that. I mean, he's a hard man and he did a number on him. Yeah, well, look, Lennox, you know, he can box a bit can fight a bit. You know, I've got a lot of respect for Lennox. I don't know him personally, but I've got respect for him as a fighter. Um, and I'm sure that he'll bring his A-game on the night. Lennox, I said this was going to be a tough fight, a hard fight. You've got to be thinking that as it comes closer, aren't you? Yeah, of course. Uh, he's a good boxer. Um, and obviously, I know what he's going to bring. Um, we've got six weeks and uh, I'm going to be more than ready. What do you reckon for him as a, as, as a fighter? Do you, do you accept that Technically, he's maybe got the edge. Yeah, I mean, technically, he's, he's a good boxer. But it's not going to be a technical fight. Um, he's not going to be allowed to do what he wants to do. So I'm just going to do what I do best, and uh, I'm going to bring it. Local lad, you're going to have some support in there as well, aren't you? Yes, I do a lot of tickets, hence why it's in Birmingham. Um, you know, it's going to be a lot of my fans there, and they're going to be cheering me on. So hopefully I'll get the result. What does it mean to you to be one of the headline acts on a on a show such as this uh, in Birmingham, which is so close to your heart, being a local man. Yeah, well, it's a massive opportunity against the top opponent. So when I pull it off, uh, it'll be a big statement. 
So what can he what can he look forward to is here. Tell him what he can look forward to on the yeah. night. I don't want you to no, I don't no. want you to show him, but you know, just give a give us a little bit of a sneak preview. No, like we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. But um, I'm, I'm going to be there to win. You're not going to be pussyfooting around. It's not going to be a, a sort of gentle fight. Well, you know, obviously, you know what I bring. He knows what I bring, and I know what he brings. So we'll see. I've said it's a, a level one difficult for the for the bookies to separate them. I suspect. What do you say to that? I don't know what to say. Make you say it again. Well, <laughs> do you think you're the favourite? Well, of course, in my mind, of course, I'm the favourite. Um, I'm here to win, so I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a top contender. So yeah, I am. And if you won the British title, what would it mean? It mean everything in front of Birmingham, in front of all my supporters, and against Lerone. It's, it, it's a big statement. And uh, likewise, I guess, for you to get that belt, an important one. Um, absolutely. Look, I'm a Commonwealth champion now. I'm going to be putting that Commonwealth title on the line as well, as the British. Well, as we're fighting for the vacant British title. And, um, yeah, I'm very confident in my ability. Like I always say, it's all about the skills. And I have that in abundance. So you'll see that on the night. The third of our, uh, our fights up here is for the British Super Featherweight title. And this is one which has been talked about seemingly for an awful long time now, but it's finally going to happen. Sam Bowen, undefeated from Ibstock in Leicestershire, up against Anthony Kakachi from Belfast, with just one defeat on his record against Martin Ward. And I know he doesn't think that he lost that fight. Um, big, big fight, this one. Let's start with you, Anthony. I mean, as I say, this has been talked about for a long time, and you've had ample opportunity to study Sam and see what he's all about. Yeah, yeah well, it was meant to happen twice before, you know, like once in London, once in Falls Park, Belfast, and that's happening here. Yeah, I've watched him. I know what he brings to the table. I know he's a tough, he's a good fighter. A lot of respect for him, you know. He has got the, the reputation within boxing of being a really hard man. Yeah, well, you can just tell by his style, you know, he, he loves uh, the wheel forward, you know what I mean? I can do both, you know, just got to see what happens, you know. What's the key to beating him? You're not going to stand in front, with, in front of him and try and slug it out, are you? Or are you? Uh, I don't want to say now, like, but <laughs> the thing is, I can box southpaw or the ducks, I can move, I can fight, you know, can he do that? We're just going to have to wait and see, really, you know. And you have on your record got a, a pretty good looking win, a, a stoppage win against another come forward fighter, maybe not as good as Sam, but decent fighter in Ronnie Clark. Yeah, well, that was four years ago. Um, my career seems to have went a wee bit stale over the last couple of years. I'm, I'm buzzing for this opportunity, you know. It's, there's not many people that want to fight me and I can't get the opportunities. And I'm mandatory, I'm mandatory now to fight Sam. I know he's a good fighter and I know he's got all the makings of a good fight. Belfast, a real fight city. Are you going to be bringing a few over to, to cheer you on? Yeah, well, hopefully, you know. I, I always have fans at every fight, so we're going to see what happens. It's a tough time of the year, you know what I mean? It's coming up to Christmas and stuff, but we'll see what happens. And Sam, champion, undefeated, proud champion. What about, uh, what about this fellow, Anthony? How do you, how do you rate him? Uh, there's no denying he's a great uh, fighter. Uh, I went with my dad to watch him when he boxed Martin Ward. That was a good fight. Because uh, I thought at the time potentially I was going to box either one of those because I was mandatory next to box with the British. Um, yeah, he's definitely a, he's definitely a good lad. He's, people can't say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting someone rubbish to defend my title. He's a top, top fighter and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it. It's going to be a good, good fight. Did you think he got a, a raw deal that night? Did you think he won that fight? Personally, no. I thought the fight was a bit, in some respects, it was like not overly that active fight. Um, Martin Ward just did what he does, picked and moved, picked and moved, uh, and Kakachi didn't really, to be, in my opinion, didn't come forward enough to get it. Um, like I said, it was a good fight, it was close in some respects. Uh, I think after mid-dab round photos with him in the changing room. So, I mean, it, it, it was a good fight and I never got to box uh, Martin Ward after that. Um, then I obviously was mandatory and I boxed... Um, Ma who did I box for the... Macquarie. Macquarie. No, to... Oh, Max Hughes, yeah, Max that's Hughes. when you won the title, yeah. Did, uh, I mean, has, you've not been, I guess, perhaps quite as busy as you'd have wished? No, ideally, I, I want to be a lot more busy than what I've been. Um, I was supposed to box in uh, August. Uh, I was injured. Um, I, had to, I was on sick with work because I couldn't work and I couldn't train. I thought, I 
I'm not going to go there and get beat because he would have beat me if I weren't prep right. Like I say, I'm not going to deny that. So I want to be on my best game. I'm not going to fight injured. So, have you have you thought at some point that you know you're going to have to go full time? That you've got to say this is what I do for a living and boxing is it? Yeah, well I am full time now. You have, you have made that I'm decision. Done. I'm done there? at work. I'm done oh, at okay, work. all right. Well, that's when when did you when did you come to that decision? Uh, only a couple of weeks ago. I thought it's coming to the point now. I've got the, I've got a date and got to start full back training and uh, I'm due to go back work. But I just thought I'm just got better. Why would I want to? I'm just going to be back in the rut I was in. I'm, my body's going to not be recovering because I'm working. They're not they're not small shifts. They're like ten hour days and then eleven hours we break. I just thought I got a tough fight coming up. At the end of the day, I can always get another job if if shit is the fun after. So. I know you. I know you don't. It's you don't want to be looking past Anthony, and I guess you'd say it's disrespectful to do so. But both of you must recognise that there's so much talent in your division at the moment. There's some really big fights out there. Yeah, there's a lot of good fighters out there. I mean, I'll be loaded if I get to fight all of them, but at the end of the day, I can only fight who's put in front of me. Um, the first one is I'm just concentrating on beating Anthony, Can, uh, Anthony Kakachi. No point in me saying, oh, I'm, I'm looking at Zelf, I'm looking at this, and you know what I mean? So. Yeah, and I, th uh, I guess the same question for you as well. I mean, there, there are some terrific fighters out there, Sharp, Zelfa Barrett, and, and other names as well. Yeah, Laysam, I would love to fight them all, but, you know, this for me is the toughest fight, and I'm fully concentrated on this. But it's always good that there's Zelfa, there's Sharp there, because there's always money, and there's always fights, so. Where's your, where's your big ambition if you get through this? Okay, there are those domestic dust-ups, but on the, biggest, on the biggest stage, in the next couple of years, where would you maybe dream that you get to? I mean, for now, we've got to concentrate on the next fight, so that's a British fight. It makes sense if I win the next fight to then defend it, and then I've won it outright. But in my opinion, I wouldn't want to keep stop staying at British level and fighting just British fights. There's only so much money you can earn there. At the end of the day, like I said, I've left my job now. I've got family to provide for. I've got a big house. I've got cars to pay for. They don't get paid by someone down the road. It's me that's got to fund that. So at the end of the day, I'd like to get into a position where maybe European or even a world title shot, and it gets to the point then where I can think, I'll oh, I'm financially stable, and then I can, like I say, can then go from there. But at the moment, it is my job, and I'm concentrating on getting the big fights to get some decent day. And last word, being on this, being on this fabulous bill, you'll be having loads of fans coming down from Leicestershire, I'm sure, to, to cheer you on. But being part of it, it's what it's about. Yeah, I mean, Birmingham, when I found out it was in Birmingham, I thought, fantastic, it's not too far down the road. It's literally probably the same distance for Leicester from where I live, friends and family, and... Uh, I've still, obviously, I know I've left my job, but I've still got a lot of people that are coming from there because they support me. And uh, my mum and my brother, they've got their own pub. I rack loads of support from there. So, yeah, I'm uh, confident that, like I say, I'll have a lot of support. Well, we'll do all the photographs face to face of the three fights here. And uh, also, the guys are going to be around. They're going to be hanging around for a while yet. So, if you've got any questions, any interviews which you want to do, Newspaper articles prepare. They're here at your disposal. Thank you very much for coming along today. The tickets are available. It promises to be a terrific night, I think, for, for real boxing fans. And if you can't actually be there, remember it's going to be live as well on BT Sport. Thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Thank you. 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 Thank you.